Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India So let us continue with our discussion. So I will go back to this diagram on this side okay. and what I am going to do is uh, I am going to just uh, rub off several things. Uh, so, so let me rub this off and also rub this side and let me just write down uh, let me just write down the uh, the implication of this uh, of this uh, of this lemma here okay so so basically on this side uh, uh, the, the biggest ideal you can think of is the uh, is the whole ring of course and well the effect of that is uh, is of course the null set which is the which is the kind of the smallest set here okay and maybe i should uh, because there is a uh, there's an inclusion reversal i should write it here you have the null set here which is the zero set of k x1 xn okay and you know uh well, then, of course, if I take a, if I take a maximal ideal, okay, M is a maximal ideal. So, more generally, I could have started with a, with an ideal I. And uh, rather, let me write it. Okay, so let me write it here. Doesn't matter. So I have an ideal i here. Uh, I would get uh, the zero set of the ideal. Okay, and of course you know if I start with the zero ideal, okay, then the that would give me the whole space. Uh, this will be just be zero set of zero is the whole space. And if I start with an ideal i1, I end up with um, well the zero set of i1, which is the sum of the whole space, right? And uh, you know, if I take a bigger ideal, I end up with a smaller set of zeros. So it goes like this, right? And if I go all the way to a maximal ideal, then you see the corresponding zero set of a maximal ideal is just a point. It's a single point, okay? And uh, 
well uh, if if the ideal if the ideal is contained in the maximal ideal then this point belongs to uh, this zero set okay so it's like this and of course the null set is contained everywhere so you have you have on this side uh, the subsets increasing from the null set which is smallest possible to the whole space and on the other side you have the ideals decreasing from the largest possible ideal which is the whole ring to the smallest possible ideal which is the zero ideal okay and there is this there is this order uh, as you can see this is an order reversing correspondence so the point i want to make is uh, i i want to explain first of all that if you take a uh, if you take a maximal ideal you will end up with a point okay and uh, why is that so that is again uh, basically if you want uh, due to the null slant okay. So, so let us uh, so let me tell you few uh, few more lines about that. So, here is the uh, so here is a lemma this is a lemma from uh, probably from field theory which you could have come across in a first course in commutative algebra but then it is uh, even otherwise it is easy to prove if, if capital K is a field. So, capital K is a field and mind you this is any field it is not necessarily algebraically closed then uh, uh, an, an ideal of the form x1 minus lambda x1 minus lambda 1 x2 minus lambda 2 and so on xn minus lambda n in k of x1 etc up to xn with all the lambda is in k is a maximal ideal. So, uh, so the the point is that so if you take so if you take a, uh, an interval of points uh, of the field, then there is an automatically a maximal ideal associated to that. So what this tells you is that there is a uh, 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 so let me write that uh, this gives. A map from uh, k n to let me write max spec uh, capital K x1 etcetera xn which sends the point lambda 1 etcetera lambda n to the maximal ideal given by So there is an there is a there is a map like this, and you know, let me quickly tell you how to how to uh, how to prove this. So what you do is you assume that uh, this point is uh, is the origin. Namely, you assume all the lambda is are zero, then this becomes the ideal generated by all the variables, and you can see that this polynomial ring, in this polynomial ring the ideal generated by all the variables is a maximal ideal and the reason for that is uh, how do you check is the following how do you check uh, an ideal in a ring is a maximal ideal you just if you go mod the ideal you should get a field. You can show that if you take this polynomial ring and go modulo the ideal generated by the variables you end up with the field k okay and therefore uh, uh, you will get that uh, the ideal generated by the variables is a maximal ideal and then uh, all coordinates being zeros not a uh, not something special this also holds for other points okay because you can always find an automorphism of the ring which maps which translates uh, any given point to the origin and an automorphism of the ring is a self isomorphism of the ring 
so it will carry maximum ideals to maximum ideals. So the fact that the all the variable generate the maximum ideal will also tell you that uh, ideals like this are also maximum okay. So that is th this is a very simple lemma that you can work out okay. So the, the moral of the story is well you know that if I take uh, a maximal ideal of this form then you know what is the point you are going to get if this maximal ideal m is going to be uh, x1 minus lambda 1 etc xn minus lambda n then the point you get is going to be just the point lambda 1 with coordinates lambda 1 etc lambda n this is the single point you are going to get because uh, uh, what is the point of kn which is the common 0 of all these polynomials for such a point the first equation is is a 0 such a point is 0 of the first equation means that the first coordinate has to be lambda 1 the second uh, it is also 0 the second equation means the second coordinate has to be lambda 2 and so on that will tell you that the point has to be just lambda 1 lambda 2 lambda n okay the ith coordinate has to be lambda i. So it is clear that if you take a maximum ideal like this the corresponding point you get is this okay and what is more serious is that every maximal ideal is of this form and that is also another uh, avatar of the Hilbert's Nullstrand Null sets okay. So, so fact uh, another avatar of the Hilbert Nullstrand sets is that the map above is surjective if capital K is algebraically closed okay. So, this is so in other words you take any maximal ideal in the polynomial ring in variables it is of this form it arises from a point in this way. And of course I also want to remark that it is easy to see that this map is uh, injective okay because if if you take two different points uh, they will go to different maximal ideals okay or you can show that if you have lambdas here as coordinates of one point and lambda primes here which are coordinates of another point such that the maximal ideals coincide then the lambdas have to be equal to the corresponding lambda primes okay. So this map is injective is trivial okay it is the surjectivity which is uh, more serious and that surjectivity is also another avatar of the Hilbert Nullstrand sets okay. So what this uh, really tells you is that uh, in our case since we are working with an algebraically closed field the, the 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 points of the affine space are precise they correspond the points of the affine space on this side as closed subsets they first of all they are closed subsets and they correspond to maximal ideals on this side okay. And uh, the, the, the other thing that uh, uh, I want to tell you is that if you take closed sets here they will correspond to radical ideals there okay. So, so let me make that statement so, uh, so again lemma or let me just put it as fact. Uh, closed subsets of A n they correspond to radical ideals of K x 1 etcetera x 
okay. So, you see I am just trying to concentrate on, on this dictionary. The first thing is that it is order reversing. The second thing is that you if you want an exact uh, equivalence uh, uh, bijection then on this side you have to take uh, radical ideals and on this side you will have to take clo the closed sets okay. And in fact uh, you can have closed sets along with the inclusion that as a partial order and you can have radical ideals along with the inclusion here as a partial order and then this uh, this uh, bijective uh, correspondence will be uh, uh, it will be bijective and it will be inclusion reversing okay. And uh, I think with uh, with what we have seen so far uh, uh, we are we can more or less uh, uh, you can more or less see why this is true. Uh, of course I should tell you the map on this direction is z the map in this direction is script i okay. But uh, you you can check uh, why uh, both these uh, uh, both these maps are inverses of each other it might require a couple of uh, results. So, let me do that uh, if you start with let uh, f in uh, a n be closed uh, then if I go here and come back I will get i f uh, well z of i of f this is what I get when I go when I go I apply script i when I come back I apply z so I get z of i of f but what is this this is supposed to be f bar we have already seen that and but then f is already closed if a set is closed then its closure is equal to itself okay. So taking the closure of the set is essentially adding the boundary the limits in a in a very naive sense okay. So, i of z of i of f is f bar but that is equal to f since f is closed. So, what it means is that if you go in this direction and come back you get the identity map on on the on the set of closed subsets of a n okay and let us go from this direction. So, from this direction uh, if I start with let i uh, in k of x1 xn be an ideal then uh, if I take z of i and then take script i of that you know that this is because of the null standard side this is rad i the radical of i this is the enlarged ideal which consists of all those elements. Uh, some integral power of which is in the given original ideal okay. But then if i is already radical it means that the radical of the ideal is the same as uh, the ideal itself an ideal if the ideal is we say uh, an ideal is a radical ideal if uh, if you take the radical of the ideal you do not get anything bigger okay. What it means is that if some power of an uh, element is in that ideal then that element is already in the ideal it means that you do not have to expand the ideal further by taking all possible uh, nth roots for all possible ends okay that is what it means. So, if if i is radical rad i is equal to i. So, i of z of script i of z of i is just i what it means is that if I start with the radical ideal here I go back go here and come back I end up with this. Now therefore these two statements should tell you that these two are inverse maps of each other from this set to that set okay and that gives you the bijective uh, correspondence here okay. And there is well there is one more uh, there is one more uh, point that needs to be noted you can ask when suppose you are not uh, suppose you are not worried about radical ideals suppose you are just worried about any two ideals you know that already any two ideals can still have the same uh, zero set here for example an ideal which is not radical and it is radical they can have the same zero set. So, you can ask more generally if what is the condition when two ideals here have the same zero set and the answer is that they 
uh, they should have the same radical in other words they their radicals are the same okay so here is one more fact so this is another fact that you can try out as a simple exercise i1 z of i1 is equal to z of i2 if and only if the radical of i1 is the same as the radical of i2 two ideals will have the same zero locus com same common locus of zeros if and only if their radicals coincide okay so this is something that you can easily check so that clarifies the 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 bijective correspondence okay now there is one question that uh, that one can ask of course coming to the commutative algebraic part the question that you can ask is well uh, well maximum ideals have come then of course you know the other important ideals you are worried about are the prime ideals so you, you can ask well if if you have a prime ideal here on this side what is so special about the zero set here okay so you can ask so so you know now once you once you start building this dic dictionary you can take properties here and ask what they uh, correspond to on this side so for example you can take z of i where i is a radical ideal and suppose z of i has some geometric property you can ask what does it mean for the ideal i that is trying to come from the geometry side to the commutative algebra side. On the other hand you could do the other thing you could start with an ideal here which has a certain property okay for example maximality of an ideal is a property okay and of course uh, primeness of an ideal is also a property and you can ask what does that property correspond to on this side when you take the zero set of the ideal. So that is the question I am asking if you start with the prime ideal here what do you get here what is so special about what you get here the answer to that is what you get on that side is uh, uh, a strong form of connectedness of the corresponding zero set and this strong form of connected is connect connectedness is called irreducibility okay. So the answer is that the prime ideals here they correspond to sets on the other side close they are of course close sets on the other side but these close sets are topologically going to be what are called as irreducible sets and these irreduce and these and, and irreducibility is a very strong form of connectivity connect, uh, uh, connectedness okay so I will explain that next so, so let us do that so this again goes uh, so let me uh, so definition uh, a subset y of a topological space is called irreducible if we cannot write y is equal to y1 union y2 where y1 y2 are closed subsets of y okay. and of course I should say uh, are proper closed subsets of y and maybe I should also uh, just to uh, make sure that uh, some silly uh, contradictions do not come I should say proper close and non empty subsets okay okay. So you see I want you to uh, I want you to reflect about this uh, with respect to the notion of connectedness see when do you say a topological space is connected okay you say a topological space is connected if it cannot be disconnected and what is a disconnection a disconnection is breaking the topological space into two disjoint pieces into two pieces which do not intersect 
such that each piece is open okay but then since each piece is a complement of the other that is because they are disjoint and their union is the whole space it is also the same as saying that each piece is closed okay. So saying that a topological space can be disconnected means that you can write it as a in two pieces which are closed okay and mind you it can happen that uh, 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 you may not be able to write the set as two pieces two uh, two, two disjoint pieces which are closed but you might still be able to write it as a union of uh, two pieces which intersect and which are closed okay. So you know for example uh, you know if you take an interval on the real line an interval on the real line with the usual topology is connected and which means you cannot disconnect it if you try to write it try to write it in two pieces okay then you, uh, you will see that in the simplest case one of them will be a half open interval the other will be half closed and therefore you can never break it into two pieces with both pieces being uh, disjoint and closed okay. But if you remove the disjointedness then you can do it okay. So you know if I have an interval from 0 to 1 I can write it as the union of let us say 0 to 0 0.8 union say 0.2 to 1 these are two closed subsets take the closed interval 0 to 0 0.8 take the closed interval 0 0.2 to 1 these are two proper closed sets closed subsets because they are closed intervals and uh, they are non empty the union is again 0 1 okay. So you see that you can always do but what irreducibility says is that even that is not allowed irreducibility is very very strong. So irreducibility says you cannot write it even as a union forget disjoint union. So when I say that you cannot write it as union of two proper closed non empty sets it follows that you cannot write it as a union disjoint union of two proper non empty closed subsets. So what you must understand is that by the very definition irreducibility is a very strong condition it is a very very strong form of connectedness and for example our uh, our interval on the real line any closed interval on the real line or for that matter any interval on the real line it is not irreducible but it is connected okay. So 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 I, I want you to understand I, I want you to think of irreducibility as a very strong form of connectedness okay and the definition of irreducible reduces to connectedness when you make this union disjoint okay. So, so here is a remark the remark is irreducible implies connected but not conversely so the converse does not hold okay so irreducibility is a is a very strong form of connectedness then the 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 so, so one wants to understand uh, uh, what are the properties of irreducibility. So the uh, so the there is one thing you can you can expect some properties that are true of uh, connected sets uh, will also hold for irreduci 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 irreducibility. So one of the properties for connected sets is well you know if a set is connected then its closure is also connected okay this is a very simple uh, exercise in topology if a set is connected then its closure is also automatically connected and uh, the analog of that result also holds for irreducibility if a subset is irreducible then its closure is also irreducible so let me write that down. properties uh, if y is is y if y is irreducible so is its closure y bar this is something I mean this uh, this is something that you can you should expect okay. Uh, 
you know the point is when you take the closure of a set you are only adding the boundary so when you take the closure you are not removing anything and you should always think that uh, trying to remove things might disconnect so after all you are adding the boundary uh, so it should not disconnect so that is the reason you take a topological topological connected subset when you take its closure it will be connected but of course you know just adding something will not help if you add something that is away then you already made it into two pieces so you must add something only in the boundary okay that is so just like adding something in the boundary does not affect connectedness the same way adding something in the boundary is not going to affect irreducibility okay that is exactly what this statement means that is one thing the second thing is there is something even more serious it is about open subsets of an irreducible set okay so uh, but 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 before I go to that let me let me again remi remind you what do you mean by closure the closure of a subset is the smallest closer set which contains that subset so it is the intersection of all the closed sets which contain that subset that is how it is defined okay fine so so uh, uh, so let me continue uh, with my earlier statement irreducibility means a lot for open subsets and what does it mean it means it means the following thing you take an uh, you take a subset which is irreducible okay then every open subset is not only irreducible again but it is also dense okay so that is a very I mean that tells you how strong irreducibility is okay so but two if y is irreducible every open subset of y is irreducible and dense so let me explain uh, so i have to i have there's something that i wanted to say that i forgot to say let me say it now see when i say y is a subset of a topological space and it is called irreducible if you cannot write it as a union of two proper closed non empty subsets what do I mean by closed subsets okay so what do I mean by closed is with respect to the induced topology so if 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 you have a topological space and you have a subset then the subset itself becomes a topological space in what is called the induced topology and what is this induced topology it is very easy you simply call you know to define a topology on a subset on a, on a space you have to just give me a class of subsets which you might call as open or closed if you call them as open they should satisfy the axioms for open sets and if you call them as closed they should satisfy the axioms for clo for closed sets so for example when i say uh, uh, y uh, y1 is closed in y what it means is that y1 is gotten by intersecting y with a closed set in the bigger topological space for which I have not given a name here if you think of the if you think of y as sitting inside a uh, topological space capital X then when do I say a subset y1 of y is closed it is said to be closed if it is gotten by intersecting y with a closed subset of X the ambient the bigger space okay. So whenever you say closed or open with respect to a subset it means it is gotten by taking a closed or open with respect to the big topological space uh, after intersecting with the subset okay that is what closed or open in a subset means this is called the uh, this is the language of induced topology okay. So, uh, so uh, that is what I mean when I say an open subset of y an open subset of y is nothing but an open subset of the big space in which y sits intersected with y okay and of course the more important thing is so the point is that a any open subset is irreducible okay which means that irreducibility is a property that passes on to open subsets okay and uh, you see this is not true for connectedness Connec a, an open subset of a connected set need not be connected for example if you take the real line okay if I take union of if you take the whole real line it is connected and take the open subset to be a union of two uh, disjoint intervals that is an open set because any open set on the real line looks like a union of intervals. So,
So, you take two disjoint in intervals open intervals that is a subset, but is that connected it is not ok. So, you see but irreducibility is something that passes on to uh, an open subset of course, uh, I, I should again uh, say that whenever I say subset uh, I should always keep worrying about the non emptiness. So, I should add that every non empty ok and you might ask uh, what about the empty set the answer is the empty set is not considered to be uh, an irreducible subset ok. So, uh, the reason is uh, it is a matter of logic. So, uh, the, the rule in logic is you deem a statement to be true if you can test it and prove its truth or if there is nothing to test then also the statement is true. So, you know if my y is already empty ok then I have nothing to test. So, it, it will uh, you know uh, uh, probably in that sense uh, it is fair to think of uh, the empty set as uh, as not irreducible. I think I think that is the uh, that is the uh, uh, standard, uh, but anyway let me let me check once more. Yeah, the empty set is not considered to be irreducible. So I'm <coughs> so the book that I'm following, which is also given as a reference for this course, is uh, well the standard a book by uh, Robin Hartshorn titled Algebraic Geometry. It is a graduate text in mathematics series GTM 52 by Springer Verlag and it is more or less the first chapter that I am trying to cover in this course ok. Fine. So, as I told you uh, the empty set is not considered to be irreducible right. So, whenever I say uh, open subset of course, I am taking a non empty open subset. So, it so you see irreducibility passes on to a non empty open subset which is not true of connectedness ok. And more importantly this is the more important condition it is dense in other words you take you take an, an irreducible space take an open subset not only is that open subset irreducible, but it is dense what does it mean to say it is dense it means that the closure of that will be again the whole whole set. So, so let me write that down that is the closure of the open set in the in in y is y itself ok. So, you know why this is so important for algebraic geometry is because you see it is like you are saying every point of y uh, uh, is in the boundary of every open subs non empty open subset of y that is what you are saying. So, what this means is that you know if you want to test things uh, you want to test properties which uh, are going to be preserved under limits ok. For example, uh, but when I say limits take it in the naive way ok, because I cannot really talk of limits unless I have a metric and I have notion of convergence and so on and so forth I do not have all that here, but I am just thinking of limits as trying to add the boundary ok. So, when I say any non empty open subset is dense what I mean is that it is closure it is boundary when you when you add the boundary to it you get the whole set which means that every point of the set is either a boundary point that occurs in the closure or it is in that open set. And so, any properties that are preserved when you go to the boundary they can be tested on an open set ok. Because testing if there is a property that is true uh, if, if there is a property which is such that it is true on a subset and then it is also true on its closure then such a property can just be tested on any non empty open set then it will automatically be true on its closure which will be the whole space. So, that is the importance of that is one of the importances imp important uh, uh, 
uh, outcomes of it being dense. Then the, uh, the other thing is that you know uh, if you take any two open sets they will always intersect that is again because of this denseness ok. So what this so, so that is another thing you cannot uh, you take any two non empty open subsets they will intersect ok. So what this tells you is that in an irreducible space the open sets are huge see in the if you are for example thinking of uh, an open set on the river real line ok. I can make the open set smaller and smaller ok or if I take the open interval 0 1 ok I can find two small open sets two small open sub intervals of that which are which are disjoint from each other which do not intersect and then I can uh, I can make them as small as I want but I cannot do that here in the case of an irreducible topological space because if you take an irreducible topological space any two open subsets will intersect you cannot make them very small. So this is one seeming disadvantage of the, uh, with uh, irreducible subsets namely that you cannot get very small open sets but then the fact is the, the, the amazing fact about algebraic geometry is even with this much of information you are able to do all the geometry that you want ok. So let me write that down here uh, in particular uh, any two open sets uh, any two non empty so I have to keep one has to keep remembering that one is working with non empty open sets. intersect in an irreducible okay. I mean this is the fact that uh, open sets are huge okay. you cannot find a very given a irreducible space and given a point in the irreducible space you should not think of you should not think of being able to find very small open neighborhoods of that point that won't happen any neighbor any non empty open any neighborhood of the point will be non empty because it contains a point the moment it's a non empty open set it will be dense you cannot expect to have very small neighborhoods you see this gives you the feeling again let me repeat this gives you the feeling that you cannot take you cannot make an infinitesimal study around a point like you do in the usual analysis you cannot take smaller and smaller epsilon neighborhoods and do analysis it gives you that feeling but that's not true the fact is that the analysis is not done on the geometry side the analysis is done on the commutative algebra side ok by studying the so called local rings of the commutative ring which are obtained by localizing the commutative ring with respect to various prime ideals or maximal ideals. So the so the, the limit process and its uh, and what you get from it in, in calculus is kind of is kind of already buried there in studying the local rings. So you should not get the get a negative feeling that well I am not able to get very small open sets uh, surrounding a point so I cannot do any analysis that is not true ok. So well so this is the other thing and uh, um, ok so let me come back to the uh, let, let me come back to this question here if I start with a prime ideal here then what do you get on that side if you look at the 0 set so the answer is if you start with the prime ideal here the 0 set of the prime ideal will be an irreducible closed subset and conversely if z of i is an irreducible closed subset then the radical of i has to be prime and if you already chosen i to be radical it means i has to be prime. So what it tells you is that the prime ideals on this side they correspond to the irreducible closed sets on this side. So that gives you an answer as to what the commutative algebraic property of an ideal being prime means in terms of geometry. The commutative algebra uh, property of an ideal being prime translates into geometry into the geometry that the 0 set of that ideal is an irreducible closed subset ok. So let me write that so let me keep this diagram here.
So, here is a bell if you want theorem. Uh, if i in k x 1 through x n is an ideal, then z of i in a n is irreducible is is irreducible of course it is close by definition but it is irreducible if and only if rad i is prime okay so if so that what it means is that if you already have started with a radical ideal then the zero set of the radical ideal is irreducible if and only if the ideal is started with is already prime was already prime okay and a prime ideal if you take the zero set of a prime ideal that will also give you an irreducible closed subset okay and in fact uh, uh, the reason uh, why we are interest introdu uh, uh, interested in irreducible closed sets of course we got into this the this notion of uh, irreducibility because it is the translation of primeness okay but then you might ask uh, uh, in what other ways it's useful so the answer is it's useful in in several ways the first thing is that you know uh, if you start with a prime ideal the advantage is if you go modulo a prime ideal you you get an integral domain you take any competitive ring and you go modulo a prime ideal you will get an integral domain and in fact uh, a competitive ring modulo an ideal is an integral domain if and only if that ideal is prime. So prime ideals are good because when you take the quotient you get at least a domain an integral domain and why are domains good because uh, domains do not have 0 devices and you certainly do not want 0 devices because you see what are 0 devices they are they are, they are elements non zero elements whose product becomes zero but elements in our rings are thought to be thought of as functions okay so what it means is if you have a ring of functions which has zero devices you are saying that there are two non zero functions okay which when you take the product becomes zero okay which is which never happens in for decent functions if a product of two functions is zero at a point you expect one of them to at least vanish okay but so you know it is not good to to begin with uh, go modulo any ideal that might result in uh, a quotient which is not an integral domain. So in that sense if you go modulo uh, only prime ideals then you get integral domains and why integral do why do you want uh, 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 rings to be integral domains that is because as I told you you do not want uh, this. Uh, geometrically non intuitive situation of having two functions which uh, whose product vanishes at a point but neither function vanishes at a point which you, which you do not expect to happen okay that is one thing. Then the other thing is uh, I already told you that you have uh, for corresponding to prime ideals here you get irreducible closed subsets and what is so special about these irreducible closed subsets the answer to that is what is called as uh, no theory in decomposition. So this no theory in decomposition tells you that you take any closed subset you can always break it down into a union of finitely many irreducible closed subsets and this break up this decomposition as you might call it is unique provided you make sure that you are not repeating any of the, the subsets as uh, as being contained in one another so if you so so the the important result is start with a closed subset here the closed subset can be written as a union of irreducible closed subsets and this union is unique up to permutation of the factors of course if you assume that no component of the union is contained in some other component no no piece of the union is contained in some other piece so this is called the noetheory in decomposition so what it tells you is that if you want to study if you want to study any closed subset you can always break it down 
into irreducible closed subsets and therefore it is enough to study only irreducible closed subsets ok. And of course since prime ideals since maximal ideals are also prime ideals this also tells you that a single point is uh, irreducible and that is but that is anyway obvious ok. So the moral of the story is that uh, we are we are somehow led to study just irreducible closed subsets ok and these are what are called as uh, affine varieties ok. So the so uh, the moral of the story is we study the irreducible closed subsets of uh, affine space and we call them as affine varieties ok and uh, open subsets of such irreducible closed subsets are called quasi affine varieties. So the word quasi is used whenever you take an open subset uh, of a whenever you go to an open subset you use the word quasi ok. So let me make that statement. So this theorem uh, is, uh, is is quite easy to prove ok and uh, probably you uh, uh, well the reason why I am putting this as a theorem is because uh, it it lo it's also something that uh, probably will use the null Stirner's arts ok. Um, so this needs to be uh, the it is quite easy to prove but but let me write down the following thing definition uh, an irreducible closed subset of a n is called an affine variety and an, op an open subset of an affine variety is called a quasi affine variety ok and uh, the whole object of uh, the first step in algebraic geometry is, is, is to study what is called as affine algebraic geometry and affine algebraic geometry is just the study of affine varieties and quasi affine varieties and I have already told you why affine varieties are important. They that they are important because uh, any closed subset, any algebraic set, any closed subset can be uniquely decomposed into a finite union of affine varieties. So, you can analyze any closed subset in this way if you analyze affine varieties, ok. So, probably I will stop here and then I uh, will indicate a proof of this theorem and uh, proof of other statements that I made in the next lecture.